Hey, what's up y'all? Back again with another video. I hope you guys are all doing well and taking care of yourself, doing things that nourish your body and being present and staying hydrated, having a somewhat of, of a routine that you always go to to help uplift you, having a certain mindset to um, work in conjunction with what you are doing externally so that internally you your your mind and your body can work together the more that you are aligned with yourself the sharper and the much clearer you will be the less triggered you will be so being in the present moment literally helps your cells um heal it literally helps yourself heal and say if an individual talks badly to you or said some, says something rude towards you, by you just being in the present moment and if you feel triggered by what they say, that means that it resonates with you and you have an opportunity to heal right there on the spot if you just allow it. You know, let the body react to what is actually going on in front of you because it is a representation of how you felt, how you feel deep down inside without recognizing um, whether you recognize it or not. That is something that does need to heal. And so what a lot of people do, they are scared to feel that pain, the hurt and the sadness because the way that we look at pain, and I've talked about this before, is that we look at it like we are suffering instead of an opportunity to heal and grow. You know, you want to get to a point where when it, whatever anyone says, you're not triggered by it. You know that they are just hurting. And if you feel that hurt by someone who has triggered you, then that means that you still have some blind spots within you and it's okay. And don't put on top of it judgment if you are triggered. Don't just get triggered and then add shame and guilt to the fact that you are triggered because it happened in front of people. And now people, all you got all these people staring at you while it's happening, especially if it happens like out in public or at a job space, you know. So as much as as long as you're just feeling what is happening without guilt you will be able to patch that up within you so i want to talk about fear and how it is in relationship with your money like being fearful of money scared of money being in lack and then also in conjunction to dating people or attracting people who are narcissistic and if you're in a relationship with someone who is narcissistic and you are in fear of them, in fear that you may lose them or just scared of them physically because you're scared of how they're going to react, that is related to your safety and your safety is connected to how you live, how you survive, your basic needs and your connection to money. So if you're in a space where you're not able to make money or money is stagnant or you're not getting the amount that you actually want is because there's some type of fear there. And I always say, look out externally to the things that you attract, the things that you may addic be addicted to. You could be addicted to negative thoughts, low quality thoughts that don't serve you or don't even serve your body as well, your immune system. That is why you have a lot of people who walk around that are sick or unhealthy or am not in the best shape um, internally within the immune system is deteriorating their weight. They may be underweight or overweight, you know, because there's a lot of stress going on and those thoughts could either be adding on, on more weight to them or those low vibrational thoughts could be depleting them and taking them away because they're suppressing themselves. So either way, you can go hand in hand. So whatever um, looks healthy to you, you know 
uh, people know a good healthy weight that they would like to be at so you know personally whatever you are addicted to externally can result into a reflection of how you feel about yourself you know and so if you're in fear of money because this was something that I it took me a long time to undo and I just barely not too long ago i've been working on this for months and years trying to rewire my brain and how i look at money and being real 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 honest with myself about how i look at money and my belief systems about money and maintaining being diligent and not fear not to feed into fear when there is a survival that kicks in with money that God is not going to take care of you or you're not capable of taking care of yourself because of what is being shown in front of you. So if you're with a partner who is narcissistic and they dangle money over your head and they use it against you and you feel as though you don't have a way to get out of that situation, I just want to tell you, you absolutely do and it absolutely starts with your mind first. Fuck everything from the external. Go more internal and start to boost up your confidence within you and becoming fearless. And one thing that I did was meditation. When I hit rock bottom, you're going to find what works for you, but it's going to be internally first. That's where I was able to sit down with myself and align the chakras that are in me. And once I started to um, focus on different chakra points um, each and every day, or sometimes I would do my root chakra for a whole month or a whole week, whatever I felt like I was called to do to heal that part of myself so I could stop worrying about money and where it's coming from. I had so many miraculous things that have happened to me when I didn't have a lot of money in my past and I didn't know where it was going to come from and money would show up. And God was just showing me like over and over again, like, you got this. You got this. Every time you freak out, look, you break out. You have acne. You're, you have a, you're, your stomach is upset because we're trying to teach you that it's already destined for you to be who you are. That you will be okay in these situations but every time those situations happened and things worked out I would become less and less stress you know and I'm a Capricorn moon so my Capricorn moon is in the second house and that is me I really enjoy money and I didn't think that I enjoyed money because the people that I was raised around you know, they would always say, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, we don't have that money. You can't do that. Or we don't have enough for this. Or you guys could probably relate to this as well. Your necessities being taken away. Like say you get a pair of shoes and you had did something. Um, you, you were bad at school or you did something at home or you talked back at home for whatever reason. And you ended up getting a new pair of shoes. From someone and whoever was in charge of you they took the shoes away from you and that was a necessity for you you needed those shoes regardless if you were bad or you know whether you were bad or defiant or whatever the case may be you needed the shoes it was a necessity so whether you were bad or not you needed the shoes whether you were good or bad you needed the shoes period and they decided to take a necessity that you needed away from you. So if you have that happening repetitively, you're going to think in your adult life that the things that you have or you've manifested are going to be taken away from you, even though you need them, even though you need them. You may have had an attitude with someone, you may have given, you know, been awful towards someone, but at the same time, we all deserve food, water, and shelter, and um, clothes on our back. 
no matter if we do have a bad day or we do treat someone poorly. Like none of us are perfect. So as a young child, what would have been the better option is to allow that child to have their necessities, but take away the extras, the video games, candy, whatever the case may be. Those extra things that are not necessarily needed, but not take away something a child needs. Because like I said, when they grow up, they think that when they accumulate something that they've worked hard for regardless, um, or they need a pair of shoes, they think that someone's gonna take it away from them. It causes lack and it causes fear. It causes fear of other people as well that someone is going to take something away from you. And in return, you're manifesting that in your mind by default. So being aware of and retracking of how you were raised around money and how you were supposed to look at money. Some people are really tight with their money and they have it, but the parental guardians are living in fear. They're living in scarcity. They're living in, oh, what if this happens? Or, oh, what if that happens? Of course, that is true to some degree, but at the same time, we're also here to experience life and enjoy it as well and not feel guilty for doing something for ourselves. And so it creates a lot of fear within us. And we're at, when, you get to, and when you get to be an adult, you have to relearn that. And then you attract a relationship a narcissist who creates the same thing as what you were raised around and not only where you 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 may have been around people who um, you know parental guardians family members you were also around friends that were in scarcity as well and spoke in scarcity oh I don't have enough of this oh I don't have enough to get that or this or this you know when the main focus should be in here first you know most children they don't care how poor they are. It's the other people that make them feel weird for having no money, you know, are barely making it. When most people just want to be understood, they want to be valued, and they want to be loved. They want to be heard, you know, they want to be nurtured. They want structure, they want some type of discipline, and they also want to be themselves. They don't want to be judged for who they are because we're all here for a reason and we're all different for a reason. So when you attract narcissists and you're dating someone who abuses you, takes, a, takes advantage of you, of your position, they know you can't get out. They see that you feel like you can't get out of a situation, that you're stuck. So they use it and abuse it and it gives them some type of false security as well because we all have the power to leave. Some people have been in narcissistic relationships and just left without anything, you know, with a bag of clothes. They've left because they were willing to risk it all to get the fuck out of that mental abuse. They wanted to get out of there. It wasn't worth it for them. And that's how strong you wanna stand for yourself that you would rather be fucking homeless and because you took that risk, God is gonna give you something greater. God is going to align you to what is actually for you because you're like, I'm snapping out of this. Like I, I would rather take a big jump of leap of faith and put all my faith in myself and meet God um, halfway to show me the way because you know you're strong. You're, you, you are, you can produce on your own. You can have what you want to have on your own and there's nothing wrong with that even as a woman there's a lot of people talking about relationships and how women need to be with men and how they are breaking up black families and all this shit and it's not even about that and how they want to be alone and lonely with cats and all this stuff it's about autonomy it's way deeper than that it's way deeper than that it's about having your own so someone can't come and take it away because people do do that some people are not kind they like to create codependency to make themselves feel important to feed their own personal ego that you are theirs when we don't own anyone 
We absolutely do not own anyone on this planet Earth. We don't own our children. If you have children, you don't own your children. You're just experiencing them. Parents and um, sisters and brothers, you don't own your brothers or sisters. People at jobs, bosses, you don't own none of those employees. No one owns anyone, okay? So I just wanna make that clear because I feel like we've definitely crossed the lines of what we feel like who we can control at the end of the day. Just to you know, solidify a family, just to preserve a ethnicity when it goes beyond that. It's about each and every person having their own passions. You know, it's not about getting in a relationship and um, the woman is only supporting the man's passion. No, two people have a passion that is somewhat along the same, along the same lines as being, you know, similar to each other. Those work. That's what works, not one supporting the other and then the one that's supporting the other, you know, most of the time, not all the time, I can't say 100%, but majority of the time, there's a lot of women who build resentment because they did not build the life that they wanted to build as well. They weren't getting the support from the man and both parties can support each other in both of their passions and their hobbies besides their job. Everybody has the right to have their own mind and their own passions and hobbies, you know? So with all this pressure and this added pressure onto relationships, that's why they're going to shit because a lot of people are focusing on the wrong things. Not everyone is supposed to be in a relationship you should never force anyone to be in a relationship with you and you should never allow someone to um, force themselves upon you like that when you really don't truly want that. And also, not everybody is supposed to have children. You know, a lot of people are being forced to have children and it wasn't even their idea in the first place. And also, on top of that, um, there are people who date the same sex, not everybody is not interested in dating the opposite sex and not all same-sex relationships are rooted in trauma or they have parental problems and mom and dad problems last time i checked there are also straight people who have mom and dad problems and they are straight so maybe some people who do date same-sex relationships there probably are people who date um for their, um, they go to the other sex thinking that it's going to save them because they're not getting anything from men. And you gotta heal that wound from from the, um, the, the men that you've dated. You gotta heal that wound from the men that you have dated before instead of running, you know, versus someone who knows that they want to absolutely date women and they're fully interested, they're fully taking responsibility, they're fully wanting to love someone of the same sex and experience that full force, not from it coming from a trauma base. But a lot of relationships, straight, I mean, a lot of same sex relationships, you'd be surprised it's not from trauma um, or, you know, um, that men are so bad. Not not every lesbian or gay guy thinks like that at all. It's not coming from trauma. And it's sad that people think that way. And the reason why they think that way is because they don't date the same sex, so they don't know what's possible. Their mind is not open-minded enough. So they wanna blame it on the fact that, oh, they have mental illness. Oh, you know, they, um, they're, they're wanting to have a job. They're wanting to be independent and alone. So um, that's why they're dating women. Like people will just find any excuse to throw it and project and deflect on just concentrating on what they want to create in their life, you know? So when you attract narcissists, just remember there was something in you that the reason why you attracted that and it's absolutely okay because we've all attracted poor relationships, you know, not the best quality relationships. I know I've gone through um, gone through dating different types of people. And then I looked at my birth chart to see how I communicate in relationship. Where's my Venus sign in? It's in Libra. So I like to balance things out, which 
when when I didn't know about my birth chart, it was too far on the other end and it was becoming people pleasing, you know? So I learned that I have to balance the scales out and I have to go first before anyone else. And there's nothing wrong with that. People will tell you that you're being selfish for putting yourself first. You're gonna break up the family. No, like people are so extreme because they want control. They don't want the woman to rise, to be full in who she truly is. And it's not even about like, oh, I need to get my femininity and I need to be in my feminine era. It's not about that. You're already a woman. You don't need to be like, I'm in my fem era. I'm in my femininity. Your body is already feminine. You're already a woman. So there's nothing to really prove when it comes to, oh, I'm being in my feminine era. You are already in that. <laughs> you are already in that. And who's to say that being in masculine energy was necessarily bad? It's just how you use it. It's how you use it. And knowing that you can always go back to your feminine side and intertwine it and play with those energies you know, your femininity was never lost. You're just doing what you love at the end of the day. It's just people are just trying to brainwash individuals of how they feel like a relationship should go or an individual should be. And that's far from the case. You don't have to prove your femininity to anyone. Even me liking the same sex, I'm still feminine. You know, I had an individual ask me when she was interested in me, she was like, are you more like more on the masculine side or the feminine side? I was like, I'm both. I am um, none of them outweigh the other, you know? So just be who you are. And if someone likes it, they'll like it. It's just that simple. And then having that awareness about you, when you know, everything about you, there's nothing to protect. There's absolutely nothing that you have to protect because you know who you are. So you know when something is off, you know when something doesn't feel right, you know, about an individual. So stick to that. What ends up happening is that we, um, as people, we act, we second guess what we know, and then we don't trust ourselves, ourselves after that. You know, so you have to start trusting your moves and acting on them when you feel it in your soul. You know, you know, a lot of people, this came to my mind the other day. A lot of people say, what does that mouth do? My phrase is, what does that soul do? What does that soul do? Because honestly, anybody can say anything and anybody can act any way, kind of way. And it's so apparent by the narcissist and how they put on a facade and they act when they're around certain people or even when they um, first started to date you, they acted a certain way and then flipped it up. So now it's for me, it's on a higher scale where it's not even just about, you know, they say, oh, it's not about the words and the actions. It's more about the actions, yada, yada, yada. I want to know your soul behind all the actions, behind all the talking. Because I'm the type of person, I could say something, and because there's so much trauma in the world and people are so hurt, they won't even believe me because they've heard it from somebody else that has actually hurt them. And it becomes so hard to prove or so hard to convince because there is just so much trauma that an individual has gone through with somebody that they so-called trusted. And then even actions can be fraudulent. You know, people can just really be acting, whether it's at a job space, a relationship, or a partner that you're interested in. They could be really good at acting. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of narcissists that do watch these videos and they have tweaked how they interact with other people and other women and, and, and other men because, you know, this is on a rise. Just like the higher ups that run this country they had to tweak 
and do the whole pandemic situation to create a problem, to create agendas so people can blame each other and look at each other and hate each other, to blame it on this race, to blame it on that race, that that's why this um, country is messed up. And it's far from the case. The people that are in charge are the ones that are against everyone, you know? So when you are internally focused with who you are and getting in touch with who you are, your soul will speak for itself. Your vibration will speak for itself. And you have to raise the standards because like I said before, God is goes by standards. So it's whatever you truly feel for here in here. And you could create a standard within your mind and convince yourself all you want, but the standard has to come from deep down in your soul, not from a like you know just telling yourself the body has to believe it and by you taking care of your body and eating foods that are good and well for you you'll be able to pay t pay attention you'll won't be as stressed as you would have been before and if if you're depleted people can take advantage of you if you're tired if you're dehydrated Think about when you're dehydrated. You start to think shitty about yourself when you are dehydrated. Your, your, your immune system starts to lower. Your nervous system starts to get wonky and nervous and causes anxiety. And then, you know, an individual who can't afford to drink um, coffee internally, I'm not talking about money-wise, I'm talking about internally, they drink it and it throws their body off even more. You know, so being aware of everything that you do externally is important. And it may seem exhausting in the beginning just to be aware of oneself, but I promise you it gets easier because your root, your root chakra is based off of fear. So if you're scared of fear, if you're, if you're in fear all the time, you're scared of life all the time, you're scared that you're not going to make enough money, you can create that. And so what happens is, like, what I notice is that if an individual is in fear, they're probably scared of the weather. We are all water. We are water beings. You know, what do they say? We're 85, 95% water. And if you are not taking care of your skin, you know, your skin is an organ, it's water. If you're in fear in a frightful state all the time, you're probably most likely scared of things externally, like the weather or tornadoes or floodings, stuff like that. So that means you're scared of yourself because your skin is water and we need water. We're made up of water. And that is and conducive to your root chakra that involves your skin. It's connected to your skin. It's connected to the base of you, your foundation, your structure, your um, security, the, where you live, what you eat, the things that you see and watch, you know, watch the people be methodical about the people you hang out with as well and how they talk. Do they talk in lack? Do you talk in lack as well? Because it's probably the same vibration. All these little things count and you start releasing your fear every single time something happens. There's been times where I walked up to in the grocery store and my card declined and that hadn't happened in a long time and um, I wasn't embarrassed. I just dealt with it. I just dealt with it. It happened to me not too long ago and I had money. I even had money in my account this time and it got stuck and it wouldn't go through and I walked outside getting ready to leave the cashier comes out and says hey it didn't go through went back in there was a really long line everyone was staring at me and it still didn't go through a guy stepped up and basically paid for everything and I even dropped my card in front of everyone like it was so funny I just was like whatever I I, I wasn't in fear I wasn't embarrassed so sometimes these things happen again not to show you your trauma, but to show you how much you've healed your trauma. That's why things come back around again. 
and to show you how much work you've actually done. How much work you've actually done. And then watch God work for you when you are fearless, when you're not embarrassed of the situation that you are in, when you know you have options, when you know God has something bigger for you. And there's a reason why you attracted this individual and don't allow them to get underneath your skin. Let them be miserable in their mind. You got to be that strong. You can't be scared to lose anything. The more that you're not scared to lose anything, the more that you will receive. The more that you don't need anything in this world, the more that you will receive. The more that you are in the vibration of least ex ex the least of expectation, the more that you will receive. But you can't lie to yourself either. You got to be so honest with you. You don't have to tell everybody. You don't got to tell everybody your business. You got to be honest with you. It's possible. It's possible. Every A lot of people deal with this. And I'm telling you, it's possible. You just got to be real honest with yourself, your nervous system. And that's how you go above and get over that being, and being in fear of not having enough money or lack. That's where it's coming from. You know, that's where, how you can get over that. I know that pain seems like it's unbearable. You might die. You, you won't die. You're not going to die when you feel what you feel in here. If you're willing to go there, your body is going to allow you to go through that. And God is there with you. Your angels are there with you. They've been waiting for you to get to that point, that breaking point to cry, let it out, let the fear, the panic attacks, to let it out so that they can move you to the next step to show you more. It's like a big cloud, a, a weight that has been on you, you know, a, a energy of weight, invisible weight that's been on you. And once you have that breakthrough, a lot of it starts to shed away. A lot of it starts to shed away. There's no match to it anymore. And you'll start, stop to have, you won't have those thoughts as much anymore. And if it does come in, you'll be like, whatever. Hi, what's up? You're coming over here now. You're telling me this now that I don't have enough of this. Like, you're funny. I already know you already. Like, I'm not impressed about this thought at all. At all, at all. So you can go find somebody else who is more in their fear state because you're not gonna munch off of me anymore. You know, that's how you're gonna confront motherfuckers because it's just like a person. Those thought forms are just like a person because a lot of people attach to it. So why not go above and beyond that and not attach to the most common thing that a lot of people think about. You wanna be the unique one energetically in the room. So thank you guys so much for listening and I hope that helps and I will be back again with another video. Peace.